Hi, I don't know if you've ever heard of a reaction system called SILAR. It stands for Single Iron Layer Absorption Reaction. And what it is, is it relies on a property of materials. If you dip a substrate into a, a, a fairly weak solution, then atoms will adhere to that substrate. Then you wash it and you get a single layer of atoms sticking to the surface. Then you can react them to make something insoluble and you can build up monoatomic layers gradually by dipping and uh, washing and reacting and washing and dipping and washing and reacting again and again and again. And you can do some really interesting things with this. One thing that is uh, quite popular is aluminium zinc oxide transparent conductive coatings for things like solar cells, that sort of stuff. But there's a whole host of things you can do with Silar. Now, if you want to know more about Silar, then just put in a Google Scholar search, S-I-L-A-R, and you'll come up with a ton of things to do. Now, it's really an interesting uh, way of manipulating the nanoscale, but with the most rudimentary of equipment. Now, all you really need are four beakers, one with the solution you're interested in, two with water, and one with the reactant and you dip in the solution, water, reactant, water, solution, and you keep on going like that. Now the only problem with it is you have to do something like two to five hundred times. <laughs> and it's really tedious, because you dip it for about anywhere between 10 and 30 seconds, whatever the reaction system you're looking at is, and you cycle it through lots and lots of times. And it's stunningly easy to get very, very bored and lose count and miss your times and all that sort of stuff. So what you really need, if you're going to do something like Silar, is a Silar machine. Something that will do that tedious job for you. So I started on Friday, it's now Monday, and I've built this! This is a Silar machine! I think it's kind of awesome, actually. It's not quite finished, but I thought I'd show you where it was at the moment, because it, it is in basics finished. So it's obviously three axis, it goes that way, that way and then this is the stage we'll have a look at there later it's a sample stage and it moves backwards and forwards and left and right and up and down to do that dipping portion of it but it's not really a CNC machine the accuracy you're looking at is is terrible really <laughs> you're trying to hit a target like that so you have an awful lot of leeway now you're only hitting four points, so all you wanted to do is hit those four points and regulate the time when it hits. So what I've done here is I've set up limit switches. So if we look at the top gantry here, you can see there's a switch there, a switch there, and a motor to drive the belt. Now I could use stepper motors, and I could use fairly complex command control procedures to make sure those stepper motors are in the right position. But I can also use a DC motor, which is what this is. It's just a window winder DC motor. When it hits the limit switch, it turns itself off. What we need to do is get some way for it to turn back on again and go to that limit switch and turn itself off again. Now you can do that with a double pole, double throw switch. Or you can do it with a double pole, double throw relay, which is right here. So I've got set up here three relays to run those four motors. These two relays run the top gantry, so this one runs the stage, this one runs the left-right, and this one runs these two motors backwards and forwards. When they hit the limit switch, they turn off until you activate the relay. That turns it back on again, hits the next limit switch, turns it off, deactivate the relay, and it will come back. So we have four positions. Now, these limit switches, of which there are eight incidentally, are normally closed, normally open, so they've got two ways of looking at them. You wire them normally closed, and I'll do a circuit diagram for the wiring, but you wire them normally closed. When they get hit by the gantry, then it's the normally open that gets closed, and the normally closed gets open, and that's what stops the DC motor. That um, closing the normally open, obviously, could be a signal. So I've taken it to a bar here, where I've got the eight limit switches in there normally open, wired into here, so when it hits the limit, I'll get a signal through there that I can read to tell me what the position of that is. But the normally closed are wired directly into the double pole, double throw relays here, so that when it's open, as it normally closed gets hit and it's open, then it will shut off the DC motor, 
and I need a signal into the relay to reverse that. So obviously these relays one, two, and three, what I can do is run those through an Arduino. So that's exactly what I'm going to do, and that's what the little space is for here, is to put my Arduino to send a relay signal so that I can turn those relays on when I've read the position of the position switches, which are also the limit switches. So that's what's yet to do, is to fit that Arduino, fit the Arduino relay board, write that program so that I can go one of four positions for any number of seconds and read when the thing is in the up position, the down position, or the home position, or any position I want, I can read that so I can time the sequence of my Silar machine. Now I plan on doing quite a bit of Silar experimentation, which is why I've built this machine. It took me about four days to build. As I say, you can see what it's made of. It's just that aluminium square stuff. I made two squares out of it, put some feet on it, put a little board in here, and then made that stage and um, wired up the electronics. That's all I actually did, but it still took about four days. Now, I am thinking about doing something in the way of a kit for this. Uh, so when it's completed and running a little bit, then I, I will do something in the way of a kit. Now, it is on at the moment, but everything's in the home position. So what I've got here is a trip switch. So that's going to my live supply, but I've tripped it here. And if I trip it onto the middle relay, you'll see that relay come on. There it is. And there is the top gantry moving. And if I take that off, it reverses its direction because the relay's gone on, hits the limit switch, turns itself off. So it's really kind of cool. Let's have a look at the... Um, sample stage. So here's the sample stage that I made and you can see it's in the home position and it needs to be up for the home position because it's going to move and there's the limit switch for it and this bit of black plastic goes up and down and here is where you attach your sample and you can attach your sample with a bit of tape because it's really only a bit of polypropylene or acetone, uh, acetate sheet or something like that that gets dipped in and out of the beaker which sits underneath that position there. Now I might put some heater stirrers in there as well so we can change the temperature of the reaction that we'll be looking at. Not absolutely essential but would be useful and that would just mean buying some heater stirrers and popping in the, them in there. And that will go up and down limited by the limit switches and the same relay to reverse the direction of this window minder motor. Now I chose 10 RPM because it's the first time I've made this. I think 10's a bit slow actually. I may go for 100 just to speed everything up a little bit but it is nice and gentle and I don't have to sit there. I can just set the number of cycles that I want and leave it alone until it's done. Here are the relays that you can see right there. There is my relay block, so that's where the Arduino signal will go in. Here's my sensor bar, where those sensor wires are gonna be. Here are my relays that are responsible for reversing the direction of the motor and uh, tripping those limit switches. And um, this is just the live and neutral in. Uh, that's all there is to it, really. That's the space there for the Arduino. There you go, a Silar machine to do some Silar experimentation with and to be able to play at that nano scale but using a macro scale technique. Uh, as I say, I'll finish that off with the Arduino, I'll probably do uh, another video demonstrating it, probably with something like uh, transparent conductive oxide. But once I've done this, I will uh, put this together as a kit, I think, uh, and we'll probably put that up on the shop. But anyway, I'll let me know if that's of interest, because obviously it takes quite a lot to put those kits together. Um, I will do a circuit diagram so you can have a look at the circuit diagram. Not of the whole thing, I'll just do one, but you just repeat it three times, that's all you do. Anyway, I hope that was of interest and thank you very much for watching.